Welcome to IntelliHome Smart DIY, where we discuss smart home tech, organizational solutions, as well as DIY projects. Today, we'll be covering three of my favorite smart home automations in early 2024. Number one is motion-based automation. This is primarily used for lighting, but you can use it for whatever you frequently use throughout the house, hallways, kitchen, laundry room, anywhere that you're, you currently go when you have to flip a light, remember to turn it off. Or if you have kids that never turn it off, with motion, motion automations, you don't have to worry about that. The lights come on when you're in the room and at a predetermined time, when there's no motion detected, it turns the lights off. Great automation, I love it. I've, uh, over the past few months, I've really integrated a lot more motion-based automation throughout my home. Number two, door contact sensors. I never thought that, that door contact sensors could be so useful, but I have it deployed in a few different places in the house. I never thought that I would find as many uses for door contact sensors as I have, but it's really, really helpful, especially rooms that you don't go into very often and you always close the door, that's the key, right? You have to use it in a room where you always close the door, otherwise you have to have a manual control to, uh, to turn it off or time-based uh, routine. But you open the door, see where the vents happen, you close the door, the reverse happens. Very, very useful. One of the ways I've used door contact sensors is here in my home theater. It's completely dark when you get in and you have to you know, rummage around for a light switch or a remote control. I've got a door contact sensor that uh, once you open the door, it lights up the room so you can see where you're going. Also, I'm only in this room maybe once a week. So there's an air freshener that's plugged into a smart plug that only comes on once the door is open. That way we're not burning through air freshener, um, you know, the other six days a week when, when you know, no one's in here, right? So a lot of cool deployments. Uh, we, we've got a wine cellar project that unfortunately I didn't document, but uh, that's really cool. Has some nice lighting in there. Uh, and uh, the, the light switch is kind of in a weird spot. So when you open the door, the lights come on. When you close the door, the lights go off, right? Very easy for my, myself, my wife, my guests. They don't have to kind of fumble around and try and find a light switch, plus, plus it's just pretty cool. My number three favorite uh, home automation in early 2024 is vibration-based automations. So I've got this deployed in a couple of unique ways. Um, you know, the primary one is uh, in my, my kitchen island, the stools all have Acara uh, vibration sensors in them. When you pull the, the seats out, the lights come on uh, above the kitchen island, which is really cool. So if you sit down to eat, you don't have to say, well, whoever, right, um, go, or Siri, uh, turn on the lights. It just comes on automatically, right? You don't have to flip a switch. Uh, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to talk to a, home, a smart assistant. Lights just come on. Same thing in our, our, our breakfast nook. You bang on the table uh, and the lights come on overhead, right? Again, you don't have to worry about where's the switch or telling uh, one of the multiple smart assistants uh, to turn the lights on. Um, I also have this in a couple of like kind of neat ways. I have, uh, have them hidden behind things like um, uh, photo frames, right? I hit a photo frame and it triggers a certain routine that's um, specific to me. Um, but primarily, I like to use this in ways where it's really intuitive. You don't have to think about it. You pull your chair out to eat, lights come on, right? So those are three of my favorite home automations in early 2024. All of the automations that I've covered today uh, are all using Akara sensors. Uh, I've uh, actually become a, a, a big Akara fanboy here over the, the past year or so. Uh, so I use the Akara uh, P1 motion sensor uh, paired with the M2 hub uh, to trigger lights coming on and off uh, based on motion throughout the entire house. I'm using the Akara door contact sensors and the Akara vibration sensors as well. So they've been very, very robust. Every once in a while, I have a, a, an outage with um, one of the motion sensors, full disclosure, uh, but for the most part, they're pretty flawless. So how does it all work? So I mentioned I'm, I'm using Akara sensors and they're triggering actions, right? Uh, primarily my uh, platform of choice is uh, Amazon Echo. Uh, so majority of my routines run through that. Uh, unfortunately, currently a car of vibration sensors don't talk to Echo. So I have to use uh, Apple Home for that. So you, as you can see, using Echo, it's really simple to make a routine. You add your trigger, what you want to be controlled, what you want to have happen. And then you can also add conditions depending on what you're doing. So there you have it. Those are my three favorite smart home 
donation to early 2024. Super simple, but I have one more time base. So as I mentioned in Amazon Echo, you can set up a routine, right? You can also set up a trigger just based on time uh, of day. So I use this for my landscape lighting and all my exterior lighting uh, comes on at sunset and, uh, and then turns off uh, right before sunrise. This automation is very, very simple, but you don't have to worry about light switches or sensors or any other triggers, right? You can actually set it for a time uh, or uh, dawn to dusk or vice versa. So that's actually a very, very beneficial one. It's pretty cool. Uh, at night, uh, all the lights come on at the same time, even though it's multiple light switches. Um, I've got the, the ring landscape uh, transformers, but everything comes on all automatically all at one time instead of staggered uh, because if you have different switches, different controllers, uh, you, you have a, a little bit of a delay. So adding all my exterior lights into one group and then turning that group on at a certain time in Echo uh, allows me to have that automation where I don't have to think about uh, turning my outside lights off or on. So obvious, obvious benefits of having these automations I can mention if you got little ones that don't like to turn the lights off, you can really save energy, right? By having everything automated. If you're not in the room, you're not, you know, paying to light a room that you're not in. So it can definitely help your house be more energy efficient, which I think is a huge benefit of having a smart home. From a safety standpoint, no stumbling around in the dark for yourself or guests, or if you have you know elderly or younger folks in your house, um, you know just walking into a room and having uh, the light you need to, to see where you're going, I think uh, definitely help, helps from a safety standpoint. It also makes rooms more inviting. We have rooms that we never turn the lights on just because. You know, we never felt the need. We were not in that room very often, but you know, having it bright and inviting as you walk into the room uh, kind of makes you want to spend more time in, in the room. So, you know, things like a formal living room that most people don't ever use uh, when you walk in, all the, the four lamps come on uh, and makes that room bright and inviting and just makes you want to spend time in there. And the wife approval factor. That's a huge one for this automation. Most smart home tech, uh, but it seems like the, the spouse tries to find a way to dis disable it, right? Uh, covering up sensors and, and you know, trying to disable things to, to make it simpler. Uh, this is one that, that definitely gets high marks because you don't have to think about it. You don't have to remember what the command is or what sequence of, you know, pressing a button or flipping a switch or whatever uh, activates the lights in the room. You just walk in and it happens. So uh, definitely a uh, huge kudos from the wife on, on these automations. Now, a couple of downsides. Uh, so these automations are have been incredible. Uh, I've been really accelerating my my motion based lighting game for the past year or so. Uh, but when I visit either a hotel or a friend's house, um, I'm actually spoiled, right? I kind of forget, uh, not for, forget how to use a light switch, but you know you have to reprogram. Oh wait a minute, I have to walk over and flip a switch. I have to walk over and turn that switch off, right? Um, and as awful as that sounds. Uh, that's what having a smart home is all about, right? Having your home do things that you normally would have to do and they're mundane and repetitive, your house just takes that over, right? So I think that's kind of, uh, you know, as silly as it sounds, it means I'm moving in the right direction. The house is actually smart and doing things for me. When I'm in a dumb house, not so fun. As I previously mentioned, most of these products from Akara and the automations, uh, you know, through uh, Apple Home and uh, Amazon Echo have been really, really reliable. I've, I've had a couple of hiccups with motion sensors just not working for a day or so. Uh, and it's really only kind of two sensors. And it really shows how dependent you've become on it working. When you walk into a, a room and it doesn't light up and then you have to kind of remember where the light switches are, um, you know, again, it's, you know, it's making yourself lazy but that's what a smart home is supposed to do, right? But overall, if you're new to the smart home game and you're trying to go from just using your voice to turn a bulb off and on, uh, I think one of the first things to do from an automation standpoint is leveraging sensors or time of day to automate things that you would manually do. So what's your favorite automation? Go ahead and comment uh, and let me know, uh, you know what you like, what your favorite automation is. And let me know if you plan on trying any of the ones that I've mentioned. And as always, don't forget to uh, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for uh, more smart home reviews, projects, and products. Thanks.